Hey everyone, it's Kia from The His Strength. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Here on The His Strength, we're all about prayer, faith, and encouragement. So if any of those things interest you, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. Let's hop into prayer. Lord God, I just thank you for this Memorial Day. I thank you for those who came before, who have served you well, who have served other people well, Lord God, and who have given their life, Lord God. We know that no one understands um, giving their life for another more than you, Lord God. We thank you for this day, God. We thank you for just the power in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for being creator. We thank you for being the ruler of all things. Jesus, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you did so that we could have life and life more abundantly through you. Jesus, we thank you that you um, cut a path in the wilderness for us to go straight to our Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the one who empowers us. We thank you for living in us, with us, and around us. We thank you for your power being made manifest in this earth and your presence being known and felt and evident. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come into this moment, come into these words, come uh, with your spirit begin to move in this day in this video in this conversation i pray that all that i say would be pleasing unto you oh god i pray that made the meditation of um, my lips may the meditations of my heart and the fruit of my lips be pleasing unto you lord god I ask that you just guide this however you may um, in jesus name we pray amen so the title of this is called memorial day it really is the title of this is called memorial day and we're going to be going straight into matthew chapter 16 starting in verse 24 and probably only really talking about verse 24 but i'm going to read verse 24 through 28 but we're pretty much talking about 24 so um let's let us read the word hold on um i'm reading from an esv bible this one in particular the study bible and this section is titled take up your cross and follow jesus verse 24 says then jesus told his disciples if anyone will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whoever would save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. All right, so... Probably want to know what does Memorial Day have to do with this scripture, but we're going to get there. So, if you're like me, there could be something. I'm trying to make sure that I keep this topic fairly general. I have talked about it before, but I'm back talking about it again. Because the Bible is forever, the word is forever, we can apply it to our live, lives a trillion times over, right? So, I want to try to keep this very much general um, so that it makes sense. But... The biggest part that I want to focus on is Matthew 16, verse 24, where Jesus himself says that anybody, if anybody wants to come after me, wants to follow me, wants to walk my path, wants to walk my way, this person is going to have to deny himself. Let's talk about deny himself. Deny himself is a word or a phrase um, in the Bible that essentially means you, your will and your desire for your own life, you put that aside and put God above it. You put what God desires above it. So say that you're someone who you desire to be, and I'm not saying um, anything necessarily, but you desire to be um, an entrepreneur and have your own business. Like that's your will, that's your desire. And God desires that you work, walk, you work up the chain of a corporate business and that you get up there and you be the best kingdom led person in this corporate space, you won't necessarily have your own business. You won't necessarily um, have your own building, but you will work the chain 
of commands in a corporate space and there's where his um, glory will shine through you. Um, or another example, you may desire You may desire to dress a particular way <laughs> because some of us, we know how we dress when we in the world <laughs> or when we, before we came to Christ, you may desire to dress a particular way and God may desire you to cover up a little bit more to avoid certain types of clothing. Um, but your will, your desire is to, you know, let it hang all out, you know, as Nelly said, and God's like, no, modest is hottest modest is hottest that's another denying yourself um or you may be a person who um you want to work on running a marathon you want to train for running a marathon your flesh is like i want to sit on the couch every day and watch suits on netflix or i want to watch bridgerton which nobody really should be watching <laughs> every day and god's like yeah, we're going to run this marathon. You need to get out and run at least a mile or two daily. That's what I mean by denying yourself. So whatever it is that you want in your flesh and your heart, you're taking these desires and you're like, look, but what does God want? I'm going to put what God wants above what I want. Um, And the reason why this is important because the Bible lets us know. Um, This is a scripture I like to reference a lot. But the Bible tells us that God went... We can't say God tempts us to do evil because God cannot be tempted to do evil. Hold on for a second. I'm about to make the connection. Man, because of sin and flesh, we have some natural evil desires. Because God can't be tempted to do evil, he has desires. His desires are not evil because he's not evil. And I'm saying this because naturally, in a sense, we are going to have some things in our life that we're going to have to deny ourselves of so that we can follow what God wants. Because we have natural evil desires about us. As humans in flesh, there's, there's this part of us that naturally desires things that are against God. So when it comes to denying yourself and taking up your cross, this is saying, I'm going to take this thing that I want to do so badly even though it's a little evil, I want to do it so badly and I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to pursue righteousness. I hope that makes sense. I, I kind of over explained that, but I'm sorry. Um, and it says, and take up his cross. Now, mind you, Jesus had to take up his own cross when on Calvary and got up on it. So if Jesus had to take up his own cross, what makes you think we won't? So we all have a cross to take up where we're going to have to die to our flesh daily so that we can, we might be dying and we might die to our flesh, but we, but we will be risen in Christ, right? Um, to follow me, pause. This is all I really want to talk about because I just kind of had this epiphany moment where there are things I desire to do. There are places I desire to be in life. Um, I might desire a stronger prayer life. I might desire a healthier life style, like eating less fried foods or something. I might desire um, to be more organized or more of a planner or something. I might desire to be cleaner or something like that. But at the end of the day, these things that I desire to do and there, these things, these places that I desire to be all have a discipline attached to it at the end of the day. And I realized through this scripture that it is a discipline. Discipline is the fruit of the spirit, y'all. Self-control is the fruit of the spirit. But to follow Christ daily, to put away childish things, to put away sinful things is a daily discipline. And there's encouragement in this. I'm actually not knocking nobody, but there's actually a lot of encouragement in this. So for those people, I got, I'm got. i going to try to talk for two seconds. But for anybody who has been walking this life with Christ longer than two seconds, you may have realized by now that following Christ, saying you're going to follow Christ and continuously following Christ takes discipline it takes waking up and sometimes there's gonna be days where we're like i don't want to do this i don't want to live life like this i want to do what my flesh wants to do i want to go party i want to go smoke i want to go drink i want to go lay up in bed with someone there's gonna come days where your evil fleshly desires try to rise up and it's tempting 
But what happens when we come into agreement with Christ, when we confess with our mouth and the, believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead is we get the whole gift of the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, we get the strength to say no to these things. We get the courage, the boldness to say, no, I'm not going to go back to these sinful environments and do these sinful things. And I'm going to take up my cross and walk with God. The reason you stopped going to those friends' houses wasn't just you. It was, it's the, there's a fruit there. The fact that you can say, no, I'm not going here anymore. No, I'm not doing that anymore. Is the fruit of the spirit discipline showing through because Holy Spirit lives in you. It's just. So what I realized was that the walk with Christ is truly a discipline. And there's encouragement because I was encouraged by this. Why is it so encouraging? Because if you're like me, and I'm going to speak for people who are like me, because some people aren't like this, but there are times you feel like you don't have discipline to do something. Like you want to work on running that marathon and you might beat yourself up a little bit because you're like, I don't have the discipline to get up five o'clock in the morning and run daily. Um, you may want to write a book, but you beat yourself up because you feel like you don't have the discipline to get up and write the book. You may beat yourself up because you want to, um, you want to have a cleaner home, but you feel like you don't have the discipline to get up and pick up some things here and there. Or when you let stuff fall on the floor, picking it up immediately, things like this. Or you're someone who has done these things before. So say you've ran a marathon before and you wanna run another one or you wanna run a, like one that's a bit further. And you're like, man, in the past season, I had the discipline and the strength to do just what I did. Or you're like, in the past season, I had the strength and the discipline to write the book. And this season, I don't have it anymore. In the past season, I had the strength and discipline to cook dinner every day. But I don't have it anymore. And I just want to be, a, I just want to be some encouraged. I want to be encouraging to you all. And I pray that those who need the encouragement, God, they let them get to this part of the video. Because I know I took too long. <laughs> so let them get here. But I want to be encouraging to you all to say that the same God who gave you the strength and the discipline for those past accomplishments and achievements and goals is the same God who can give you the same strength and discipline now. If you have written a book before and you feel like you don't have the same discipline or self-control to get the pages knocked out now, I promise you the God that helped you through it before is the same God that will help you through it today. If you lost all that weight before and you're like, man, I don't have the um, discipline to do it anymore. The God who got you through it then will get you through it now. If you don't have the same discipline to stay clean, the God that got you through it then when you were clean before can get you through it now. If you don't have the same discipline to read, the God that helped you read and finish those books before will be the same God to help you read and finish the books now. And here's your proof and here's your evidence and here's your receipts because this is what I needed. I needed this for myself so I could remember because it might be a different area of your life, but it's the same God. I actually had to take the time to first establish what the goal is. What is the thing that I feel like I need so much discipline to do now that I don't feel like I have the discipline to do? One, I needed to identify that. So I wrote it down. Um... I just wrote it down, wrote it out, journaled about it a little bit. And I asked myself, and then I realized that as, as a believer, I have the gift of the Holy Spirit. As a spirit-filled believer, I have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, <laughs> So to realize that, I'm trying to make these connect and not get lost in my thoughts at the same time. I, I'll claim it, and for anybody else, if you're a... If you have the Holy Spirit and you're a spirit-filled believer, then you have the ultimate source to discipline. Why? Because self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Discipline is a fruit of the Spirit. You have the Spirit that the Bible is talking about, that self-control and discipline is a fruit of. That Spirit, that one, him, he 
lives in you is with you. He is the source of all discipline and strength. He lived, you have him. You have the source, the direct contact and access line to the source of discipline. So there's nothing you can't do through self-control and discipline. You might have to work the muscle. Um, and the Bible lets us know that when it comes to fruits of the spirit, these are things we have to have in increasing measure. So there's going to be pro process in our life that works that muscle of discipline, right? But please recognize, establish what is the discipline that you feel like you lack. And then I want you to realize that you have all access passed to the creator of that discipline. And then I want you to take the time to figure out, get, get, this is why it's Memorial Day. Get a memory, okay? Get a memory. <laughs> Make a memorial. And I'll have to link my pastor um, sermon from yesterday that was very great about this. And this is where some of this is coming from. I'm like some of the inspiration and push for this is coming from. So I have to link that below, but get a memory you guys too, as well, where God had met that need before, where if it's discipline you're looking for, get a memory of where you discipline was made known and evident in your life. And it doesn't have to be in the exact area either that you're looking for discipline now. Just find a memory, a few memories actually, not just one, a few. Because God is so good that I doubt he only did it for you one time. And if you feel like I don't have a memory, go to the Bible and find another memory in the Bible <laughs> where God made himself known through this chan like through that channel um, of what you're looking for, that need you have, go to the Bible and find it in the Bible. Don't go nowhere else, okay? Because in my heart, I, like in my head, I was about to say, ask a friend, something, something. No, you get a memory of your own where God did it for you before. Or if you can't think of one, go to the Bible and see where he did it for someone else in the Bible or where he's done it in the Bible. Because that's his word. And God and his word are like this, can't be separated. So I want you to do that. Because for example, if in my life I'm looking for more discipline to work out five times a week, right? Well, then I have some examples of discipline in my life. And here's some examples not in the same area. Um, me, one example is I haven't had an alcoholic beverage since December 2021, two years ago two years ago and beforehand I didn't see it as much as discipline or it being a fruit of the spirit discipline um but now I'm looking at it like it takes discipline to go that long without having drinking alcohol especially considering you may have dr drunk it before or you may have been in environments where people around you were drinking it or whatever the case may be there there's evidence of discipline um We'll say this in the best way possible, but uh, premarital, y'all know what I'm trying to say. The thing you're supposed to do, consummation, okay, right? It's been a bit of time since doing that, right? Which takes discipline because you got to be disciplined enough to not put yourself in that situation. And if you end up messing around and putting yourself in that situation, you got to be disciplined enough to not follow through, right? Smoking. If you have any smoking habit, nicotine, marijuana, whatever the case may be. Smoking. Recreational drugs. Whatever the case could be. Me, personally, I haven't done that since 2020 or something like that. I don't remember when. That takes discipline. Um, or even... There was one time in my life before where I lost like 40 to 50 pounds back in 2017. It took from like 2017 to 2019, 2020 to lose the total like 50 pounds. So about a three, two to three year range there. But that whole process took discipline because I had to show myself like I had to be strong and tough to deny myself the things that I really wanted in that time to even see the results. I hope this is encouraging as well as a little bit of homework. And as I, I like to say, conversation starters for you in Christ, because I just want to be encouraging 
to be honest. That in this season, some of us are probably looking for things like discipline, things that are fruits of the spirit. Um, if you could give me a moment, I'm actually gonna pull. I'm actually gonna pull up. Um, the fruits of the spirit I think are listed in Galatians six, you guys, and I didn't have it marked down. And funny enough, this Bible does not have tabs, which is wild to me. It is forcing me to know how to get to these places in the Bible. Wild. Okay, there's Galatians. Okay, cool. I'm going to read that since I've referenced it so much. Galatians 6, I think. Because um, I want y'all to be able to have it. Oh, I could be wrong. Not Galatians 6. Is it Galatians 5? This is why we go to the Bible. This is why. Um. Oh, gosh. Praise the Lord. This is why we go to the Bible. It's Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Um, and I'm going to read where it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, wow, faithfulness, gentleness. So some of these, I'm just like, memories are flashing in my mind. Self-control against such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. All right, so let's break that down. So we can do this for anybody. I'm not going to break it down. But um, so if there's anything you're looking for in Christ and you're like, God, I really need this thing. But I don't think I have this thing anymore. Get a memory on this Memorial Day. Make a memorial have a Memorial Day moment with Christ and get some memories of where God has shown you these things already, these fruits of the Spirit through you before and write them down and remember them so that in this season when you're trying to achieve this new thing, you have the same faith and the memory and the track record to say, oh, I've done this before with Christ. God can do it again. If you're having a hard time showing love in this season you don't think you're loving enough go back and get a memory of the times you've been loving write them down you can keep being loving joy if you feel depressed in this season you don't think you have any more joy go back to a time i don't care if you got to go back to when you were two years old three years old go back to a time where you show joy the joy of the lord and hold on to that and write it down peace if right now you feel like things are chaotic and are not settled, go back to a season where you had peace or moments where God showed you peace, write them down and keep the faith for peace today. Patience, same thing. Kindness, same thing. Goodness, same thing. Faithfulness, same thing. Gentleness, because people right now in the body of Christ are not have a tendency to not be gentle enough, but we're the body of Christ. We're supposed to be gentle, compassionate, and stuff like that. If you think you're having a problem with gen having a hard time showing gentleness right now, go back to a time where you demonstrated it. If you can't find one of your own memories, go to the Bible and find where Jesus demonstrated gentleness and hold on to that faith of gentleness, your gentleness, self-control being the last one. You having a hard time controlling yourself right now and you don't think you have it in you anymore to show the same self-control get a memory it's memorial day remember it and use that to ignite your faith for the next thing or for this current thing that you're believing for so that is all actually the video went longer than i expected it to but nowadays i really do try to take my time when i'm talking because sometimes it's nice and cute to talk fast but when you be missing your points and stuff and you rushing it, it ain't so cute. It ain't so cute. It's much cuter to do it this way. So anyways, you guys, 
I pray, I pray, I pray that this will be a conversation starter for you in Christ. I pray that this helps you sit down and start to pinpoint those things in your life that you are believing for more fruit of the spirit in. Um, and I pray that God will begin to start downloading memories into your brain, into your heart, into your minds for you to remember what God has done in this area before to give you the faith. So God, I pray that these people's faith will be ignited uh, with the memories, the memories that they have of you doing it before. May their faith be ignited that you'll do it again. And may their faith be assured that just because you've done it once before doesn't mean you won't do it again. Let them know that you are not a human. You have more than enough energy, God, to do it again and again and again and again. Just like with financial blessings. If you blessed your people before, God, with a financial blessing and they think you don't have it to do it again, show them that you're the source of all these things, of all blessings. God, I pray for your children's faith and strength and courage to keep going, to remember the former days and to look forward, forward to the um, latter. The future, Jeremiah 29, 11, you guys, for I know, God said, for he knows the plans he has for you, plans to prosper you, to give you hope in a future, not to harm you guys. So get a memory of when God has shown you the hope in the future before you use it to ignite your faith for the future that is to come and for the present that is now. So anyways, I love you all so dearly. Most importantly, God loves you. Um, and it is peace and joy until next time.